Hey everybody, welcome to Coffee with Kelly week 164. I have two shout outs this morning. Thank you to Jackie Becker. Jackie, thank you for these earrings. I don't know if you guys can see them, but they are little, well big, coffee cups. Jackie, I don't have your number or email or anything to tell you thank you, but that was so thoughtful of you. Her daughter made these, so she bought some for me. Thank you so much. And also for my friend at the retreat, we just did some weeks ago to the one another's. She thought this mug was funny. It said, I survived another meeting that should have been an email. So cheers to that. I agree. I have many of those meetings that could be emails. So um, welcome and thank you for joining me this morning. Our topic is going, our topic is going to be two-faced. So um, great topic, right? So let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we come before you this morning, and I just thank you, Lord, for um, just the privilege that we have to be one of your kids. Um, Lord, just everything that that means, uh, just that our identity is in you, and you are our family, uh, you are our Father eternal, Lord, and I just thank you for that. And so I pray, Father, now that your spirit would speak to us, Lord, as we talk about growing close to you and listening to you, and, and talk about the topic of what it means to be two-faced. And I just give you the next few minutes in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, it's probably not two-faced like you're thinking two-faced. I recently was reading a book to my six-year-old grandson, Jude. And uh, the other ones, all three of my grandkid boys on that side, were very into superheroes for a long time. Batman, not so much Superman, never did that. I think that's my era but Batman, Spider-Man, and such. And the eight-year-olds have kind of passed it on to Pokemon and stuff, but um, my six-year-old kind of does what they do. But when we're alone, he reverts back to the Batman and the Spider-Man that I know he loves inside. Um, just like the other ones think they're too old for Paw Patrol, but they really want to watch it, you know, how that goes. So anyways, I was reading a book, a Batman book, to Jude, my six-year-old. And in the book, one of the uh, characters, one of Batman's adversaries is Two-Faced. I don't know how familiar you, familiar you are with Batman series or his adversaries, but he is a villain or a super villain. Um, he was a skilled marksman. He used many uh, different kinds of weapons and guns, pistols, grenades, shotguns, stuff like that, usually pistols. And he was a normal guy who lived in Gotham City, if you're familiar with Batman. Um, he was actually a DA in Batman. He was in a trial one day and he was representing someone and one bad guy mobster who's, I don't know his name, threw acid on him uh, and his whole left side of his face was burnt with acid. I think all the way down his left side actually. And they say, whoever they is, that he went insane. And he adopted this two-faced two persona, a criminal obsessed with a duality and concept of good and evil. So he had one side normal, one side scarred by acid. And he, the weird part about two-faced, um, again, two-faced, he made all important decisions by using a flip of a coin. One side of the coin was normal and the other side was, looked scarred like his face. And so he would come to a, a thing and he needed to make a decision and he would flip that coin. And if the scarred part came up, he would do the evil thing, uh, looting and go on this criminal rampage or this criminal direction. And if it came up on the normal side, he would give his loot or his charity uh, or his you know, stuff to a charity, or just wouldn't do the criminal act. Very strange character. Um, the flipping a coin to see what action he would take. I read that this character was based off the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I thought was fascinating as well. I'm really not into superheroes, but that was kind of weird. But anyway, so after I read that to him and we talked about it, I just thought about Two-Faced the rest of the day for some odd reason, as I do. That picture stuck in my mind, and I wondered, what if we made our hard decisions by the flip of a coin? And I thought, hmm, maybe sometimes we do that when we don't knew, know the right thing to do. Almost the eeny, meeny, miny, mo type of a, a test because we don't know the answer. You know, the struggle between good and evil is real, right? It's really there. 
When I was a little, I was taught, I don't know if I was taught this or I just assumed it, but I believed that I had a guardian angel on one on one uh, shoulder and a bad demon angel that held a por uh, pitchfork on the other and that they would constantly talk to me and try to tempt me between good and evil do this don't do this do this don't do this and I really believed that and um, I think sometimes I can still feel like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde especially pre-menopause for you ladies who were there I mean you just felt like you know you were saying one thing you're so emotional and you were saying one thing to someone and inside you were watching that person say why am i saying this who am i you know and you it's like you were watching this it was just a very surreal experience so um anyways take that for what it's worth but anyways that's not what the bible says about the two angels that that tease us but god has given us a, a conscience I was trying to define conscience. We know what it is, but how do you define it? Um, it's sort of this moral compass that uh, teaches us right from wrong. Um, I read that it was an inner feeling viewed as an acting guide to the rightness or wrongness of someone's behavior or a moral sense of right or wrong. Some say that a conscience is a gift from God placed in us. Um, you know, and gave, gives us the standard of right and wrong, which is interesting because some people appear that they have no conscience. So somehow it's got seared topic for another day. Anyways, I have a family member who has a uh, Jiminy Cricket uh, tattooed on their leg. And one time I asked what that was for because it's a cricket, Jiminy Cricket, who was uh, kind of the conscience in that story. And I asked what it was and they said, well, you know, it's kind of the conscience, Jiminy Cricket. And I thought, hmm, you have a cricket, I have the Holy Spirit. Okay, whatever. So anyways, we all know or have some kind of understanding of what a conscience is. And the fight between good and evil within us is very real and we call it flesh and spirit. Paul identifies it in Romans chapter seven and on how he feels. And he says, for what I am doing, I do not understand for what I will to do that I do not practice but what I hate I will do um, in the New Living Translation it says in uh, Romans 7 14 through 16 so the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good the trouble is with me for I am all too human a slave to sin I don't really understand myself for what I for I want to do what's right but I don't do it instead I do what I hate but if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So Paul is trying to, you know, say the struggle is real. Why do I do what I don't want to do? And I think we all relate to that struggle within Paul. And uh, we can relate between that struggle between flesh and the spirit every single day. I think the struggle will always be there, right? Because we are born again and we have the opacity or the ability to walk in the spirit, but we are flesh beings and our flesh can be very strong. And so that temptation and that struggle is real. And I believe just like, uh, you know, I, I think I talk about this all the time. The one you feed is the one that is stronger. If you are feeding the spirit with the things of the Lord and scripture and praying and your spiritual disciplines and you're feeding the spirit, you will be strong in the spirit. If you are neglecting the spirit and feeding the flesh and um, you know how to do that, then that is the stronger one. And so when we are faced with decisions, whether they are quick decisions or weightier decisions that we need time to kind of muddle through, whichever is stronger, oftentimes our flesh or our spirit, we, we choose that one. And so the importance of feeding our spirit. We all, uh, you know, it's different than tossing a coin. We all have a choice. Two-Faced had a choice to toss that coin every time he's faced with a decision and decide what he's going to do. Well, you and I don't toss a coin, but we are still faced with a decision, um, a choice on the decision we're going to make. Um, we have a choice to stop and pray. We have a choice to base our decisions on the things of the Lord, on scripture, on what did Jesus do. 
um, according to the word of God. We have to be tuned into the spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then we can make these decisions that please him. And sometimes we choose wrong. We all have the choice, though, to stop and to pray and to seek the Lord or not. To choose to feed our flesh, to give in to the temptations that are there every single day. We make that flat uh, flash decision. We choose to read something we shouldn't, to watch something we shouldn't, to listen to something that isn't edifying, to um, get involved in a conversation that we shouldn't, that can lead to gossip, to talking about someone else. Or we simply make decisions that are based on us and what's good for us without thinking about how would we please God, how will that affect other people in our lives, and I think we often are faced with that temptation as well. We think if it's good for us, hey, it's the right decision. Um, we tend to put ourselves naturally first, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit's influence in our lives, in our minds, and our hearts to show us the way and attitude of Christ, because it's so different than um, putting ourselves first. The art of dying to self, that's the Jesus way. Learning of him and deciding to follow him and make our decisions based on pleasing him. So on another note though, when we think about two-faced, probably when you first hear that term, we think about uh, that phrase which means to behave in a false way that hides maybe our real feelings or pain or whatever, or saying one thing to someone and then saying something else to someone else, or saying something to someone that we really don't mean. That could mean two-faced. It means not honest or sincere, not uh, saying different things to different people in order to get their approval. And sometimes we can be guilty of that as well. And yet another analogy in the character of two-faced and what does the Bible say about that or about being uh, that kind of two-faced person? Well, God's, you know, his words clearly talks about being honest, not lying, and don't flatter people. I think it can fall under the category, that category. Proverbs 26, 28, a lying tongue hates its victims and flattering ruins causes ruin. Flatters sabotage trust. In Jude 16, it says, There are murmur murmurers, complainers, who walk according to their own flesh, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. That's what it means to be two-faced, flattering someone to gain advantage, to maybe perhaps sway them into something or something like that. There's a lot of different ways we all know what two-faced means. So when you hear the phrase two-faced, you can think of two different things. Think of that first person, the second one we talked about, who's two-faced, says one thing, means another, clearly wrong in scripture, but also the one who tends to make decisions like our character two-faced, almost like a toss of a coin, instead of seeking God and what's right and what would please him. So um, think about that. It's kind of a an interesting um, take on the character of Two-Faced. Two I can't talk this morning. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be filming when I can't talk. But I don't know. Just think about if we had to toss a coin to make a decision. But I guess we, I just kept thinking of how often I think I do that without even realizing I do that. As kids, we're taught to do that. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, pick up whatever by the toe. And then we, we choose. And how often we do that in our lives. And so let's seek the Lord his will in all that we do instead of being two-faced. Amen? All right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we don't have to resort to tossing the coin or like in the Old Testament where they cast lots and that came up and showed them that's how you spoke to them at the time. But Lord, now you've given us the Holy Spirit who can speak to us through prayer, speak to us through the Word of God, um, speak to us in so many different ways through our conscience. And so, Lord, I pray that we would seek you in your spirit and feed the things of the spirit so that we would not fulfill the lust of the flesh like scripture also says. Lord, I thank you for this time. Um, I pray that whoever's listening would get past all my words, stumbles, and hear the heart of what I am trying to say. And most of all, hear your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, ladies. Don't be two-faced. See you next week.